arrow diagramming method. Humans are creating work schedules to track their project's performance since the construction of the pyramids. In the beginning, they use quite simple techniques and charts to represent the work that needs to be done. After the usage of the first Gantt charts which are the predecessors of the modern Gantt charts, scheduling practices evolved and then project controls became an area of expertise. Unlike the first Gantt charts, schedule network diagrams are created by establishing logical links between the activities in modern projects. Schedule Network Diagrams A project network diagram of a work schedule demonstrates the logical order that the activities will follow. It shows a sequence of tasks and or deliverables required to complete the project. Basically, there are two common techniques to create network diagrams. These techniques are arrow diagramming method, or activity on arrow, and precedence diagram method, or activity on node. Schedule network diagrams enable us to determine the critical path of the project. The critical path is the longest path where a delay on it results in a project delay. How to use arrow diagramming method? Arrow diagramming method is a project network diagramming technique like the precedence diagram method. Unlike the PDM, activities are shown as arrows on the diagram in this method. There are two main elements of the arrow diagramming method which are arrows and nodes. One arrow represents one activity to be performed. The starting point of the arrow represents the start of the activity and the ending point of the arrow represents the end of the activity. The length of the arrow represents the duration of the activity. For better understanding let's analyze the schema. The circles numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4 are the nodes of this network system. They are the definable achievement in the project. Nodes have neither duration nor resource. Activities A, B, C, D are represented by the arrows. Each activity has a duration and allocated resource. Dummy activity. A dummy task is not a real activity that is added to represent dependency between tasks. It can be used to separate tasks or to keep the sequence correct. The duration of a dummy task is often zero. When to use the arrow diagramming method. Arrow diagramming method shows the logical order of activities that helps to determine the critical path and identify the main problems related to resources and delays. From this aspect, it can be used for schedule compression practices such as fast tracking and crashing. Arrow diagramming method can be used to plan and track the activities within a complex schedule that includes many resources. For a successful implementation, activity durations, their sequences, and project execution strategy must be clear. How to use the arrow diagramming method. Identify all the activities required to complete the project and list them. Estimate the activity durations considering the crews and quantity of work. Estimating activity durations is an important process because activity durations affect the length of the critical path. Determine the predecessor, successor activities, and logical sequences. Draw the network diagram by using the data created in the former steps. Draw the nodes for events that represent the beginning or end of an activity. These nodes separate the activities. Use dummy activities when needed and show them as dashed lines. Determine the critical path of the network diagram by performing forward pass and backward pass calculations. Calculate the ES, earliest start, EF, earliest finish, LS, latest start, LF, latest finish, dates for each activity. Calculate the total float and free float for each activity. Total float is the duration that a task or an activity can be postponed without delaying the project. Free float is the duration that a task can be postponed without delaying the ES of the successor activity. Float is also known as slack.